I'm speaking with Gary Southwell. He's the Chief Technology Officer with BTI Systems. Gary, what is content-aware networking and what issue does it address? Content-aware networking is a more efficient way for service providers to actually deliver over-the-top video to their subscribers. So it helps them save money and deliver a higher quality product. What does this mean for the service provider? Today the service provider has been struggling with how to deal with the flood of over-the-top content. So what we've developed is a transparent way to actually handle the content so that they can decrease the amount of traffic that they're pulling through their network and then play it out closer to the end user. So it does two things for them. It helps them decrease their costs of pulling this through the network um, and avoids a lot of the upgrades in their network. And then there's an added bonus where the actual end subscriber sees a much higher quality product where you get a, a smooth stream that looks much like a, a cable TV or a DVD playing on your TV set, unlike a jerky, low resolution internet experience that people get today. How does transparent caching differ from what other vendors are offering today? Yeah, transparent caching is somewhat unique in the industry today. We've taken a different approach to caching. In the old days, caching was basically a proxy cache, which meant that the device in the network was actually pretending to be the actual origin server that's serving the content. The problem is operators don't have the staff that a, a Google or others would have to keep the content clean. So what transparent cache does is allow that request to always go back to the origin. So if there's any copywritten or inappropriate content, we always check first to see if we should play that content, and then we play it out. If it's, if it's taken off, we basically throw the content away and then just allow that screen to play through. So it makes it for a much more cost-effective way operationally for carriers to roll this out without any headaches or any worries about you know, legal compliance with the uh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Is there anything unique about the implementation? Yes, there is. What we've tried to do is put the widecast cache as far out in the operator's network as possible. So we have to have an extremely small size form factor that's only 4U high and about 12 inches deep so that we can go into any location, whether it's a remote CO, a vault, a base station cabinet, so that the content can actually play in the location that's suitable without actually changing the location. There's no need to improve the power or add cooling so we can go in and fit in the environment in which uh, we allow the uh, content to be played from. Where is Widecast being used and in what applicable market segments? Widecast is being deployed today all across the world, North America, Europe, Asia. Um, but what's most particular is that it fits in all tiers of the service provider market. Tier ones are interested all the way down to small tier threes. And the nice thing about it is it's simple enough that it can be easily deployed you know, where you don't have a large operational staff. So we also found that this is also working in other markets, like uh, in the uh, research and education market in particular, we're now finding universities very interested in deploying this because it'll deal with their over-the-top content and also handle their peer-to-peer -peer traffic and give them a much more efficient uh, means. And we believe this will now expand into other segments, such as doing cloud computing and other applications as we go forward. Gary, thanks so much for talking with Light Reading today. Thank you.